hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel so guys today's video is so interesting um doing a collaboration it's very it's my very 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 first time doing a collaboration and i'm doing it with the lovely priv she is a flight attendant and she'll be telling us today about her job what she likes what she doesn't like about her job and her social life too because they do have one guys they do have one trust me so stay tuned guys she'll be answering questions and i'll be doing the same so it's gonna be interesting guys stay tuned hi guys uh welcome to my channel today is gonna be a different video i'm doing a collaboration with Notando. she's from south africa and she's a medical student in russia so um she's she's in russia and i'm in qatar we send each other questions uh that we're gonna be asking each other to make it easy for our videos and um for those who don't know me my name is Priv. um i'm a flight attendant proud flight attendant <laughs> i love my job i love traveling the world i love meeting people uh so if you want to know more about me and my job stay tuned okay guys so the first question is how do you cope with being away from home ah guys so i think on my side i'm lucky that i was able to come to russia with my sister so yeah um i don't really feel too far away from home because she's always with me like we've like we literally share like the same space so i don't really feel like i'm too far from home but every now and again i do try to call my family i miss them so much and it's so sad because this year we never got to go home so it's really sad guys but i try my best to communicate with them as much as i can you know it's it's sad because like literally I, I i just love being home i love being home so yeah it's, it's not easy but we try we try we try to communicate uh, so i'm gonna be looking at my phone this is where my questions are so don't mind me so the first question, um, how did I decide on becoming a flight, at, flight attendant? So I've always wanted being a flight attendant from a very young age. And the problem is from back home, it's, it's not easy to be a flight attendant. You have to go for, for the flight attendant school, you know, you have to pay lots and lots of money and then it's very expensive. And on top of that, uh, you have to have a cabin crew license. Whereas um, where I am now in the Middle East companies, you do not need a cabin crew license. They train you, uh, they give you the licenses and all that, and it's all for free. So, yeah, this is how okay. I got The next question is, um, how do you manage challenges studying in Russia? Okay, guys, if you know Russia, you would know that um, the language barrier is actually the main challenge, the biggest challenge, because... Here in Russia, I don't really speak a lot of English, although I am an English medium, but the English medium is not like really English medium. So how do I manage it? I try my best to get English uh, medium sources, whether it's YouTube videos. Some people actually do teach like, you know, on online on YouTube. So I actually depend on those. And we also have ebooks now. So if we cannot get like maybe uh, English chess books in our library or in maybe anywhere here in Russia, we just depend on ebooks. So that's how we manage those challenges and we also create like our own study groups um because um we are able there to like teach each other as a group so yeah we, we depend on those that's how we actually manage most of the challenges by ebooks by youtube videos by studying as a group and it's mostly uh south african students because we are trying our best to prepare ourselves for the board exam so yeah that's how i study second question uh what do i like the most and dislike the most about my job well um what do i like the most i get to travel i get to meet new people uh, i get to learn different types of uh, aircraft i can tell an aircraft when it's flying over which what type of aircraft is there yeah I'm, i love aircraft and um in the long run i would really love to be a pilot so i'm working on that and saving on that and uh what do i dislike most about my job well it's 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 not a dislike it's just a downside um my job requires me to work even in during holidays times where i'm supposed to be with my family and everything yeah, i have to work and um yeah that's all otherwise um there's nothing much that i dislike about my job and oh yeah i i like that i get to shop without looking at the price tag so yeah I, there are more likes than dislikes for my job. <laughs> uh, third question, um, how is it like 
being away from your family all the time and do you often go home how often do you go home uh well it's the thing is i grew up in a boarding school so i've always been away from my family all the time so it's it's, it's not hard it's not that hard for me to be far away from home yeah it's got yeah sometimes it affects me when it's birthdays you know when it's funerals and like i'm not able to go back home for the funeral for reason being maybe i'm in another different country and yeah i can't travel and um how often do i go home well it depends on my schedule if i have off days on my schedule i can always come back from a flight pack my bag and i'm gone sometimes i don't even have to pick my bag i just have to change carry my um my purse then I'm gone so I, I always go home more often maybe in a month I can go between two to three times yeah and also on your on vacations we have leave which we call vacations so I get to go home maybe for you have like 30 days vacation so I get to go home a lot of times eh? <laughs> okay so the next question is do you have a study routine or a study planner? Well, if you know me, you know I'm a huge planner. <laughs> I like to do like the whole planning thing. I even have a goal tracker and all of that. So, but currently we are actually on holiday still. So I haven't been doing a lot of studying, but yes, I do have a study routine. And I normally do my studying at night because I feel like it's more quiet for me and it's more peaceful. So I'm able to concentrate. So I'm a night owl, like literally I start studying uh, sometimes from 12 to 4. Or I start earlier depending on what I have to prepare for and I'm in two study groups and we meet we used to meet twice a week so we had one on Tuesday and I would prepare I start from Sunday and prepare for my Tuesday study groups and then on Wednesday I do revision I'm going to revise my previous work or work that we were doing in the study group and then from Thursday now to the rest of the week what am I doing I'm studying for my next study group so yeah, that's how I used to plan my, my, my work. And um, sometimes, okay, when we used to go to school, when before the lockdown, we had like um, lectures where it was just Russian. So I'd sit there and be studying something else instead of actually paying attention because they are in Russian. So at least I'd be doing something else. <laughs> something that's uh, part of my study routine. So that's how I'd do it basically. And I study at night, only at night, mostly. Yeah. Okay, fourth question. How have you been affected by the pandemic both at your workplace and personally? Um, as you all know that the pandemic has actually affected a lot of things in the aviation industry. Um, we don't get to fly a lot like we used to before, but now flights are resuming and things are getting back to normal. So hopefully we get to fly again more and the other thing is uh, I'm a people's person you know I like chatting to people I like talking to people so when I'm in a flight I like I like engaging with customers I like engaging with my colleagues but right now you cannot do that uh, we have to social distance and all that so yeah that it has actually affected a lot of things for me and yeah it's, 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 it's uncomfortable wearing a mask for like 16 hours sometimes we have ultra long of flights flights which are very long maybe you're going to the US or you're going to Australia or you're going to Canada it's, it's a very long flight so it's really uncomfortable to wear the mask and how has this affected me personally well the pandemic has actually derailed my plans um, I'm building my house and yeah I was supposed to be finished by now but I can't because <laughs> The pandemic happened and we haven't been getting more flights meaning less flights less um, less salary and all that but hopefully things go back to normal soon okay the next question is um what is the most essential equipment every medical student should have well it's tricky though because uh we are different but for me personally i believe it's a telescope um i really think it's very essential for every especially if you're doing your practicals you need your own stethoscope um because it's not like a book like 
it's not practical i feel like a book is more scary like you'd learn okay this is where you check for the heart sounds but with this you actually get to hear it for yourself and it's not just for the heart only guys it's also for breath sounds and it helps with many other things like when you're doing your auscultations and all that in your practical so yeah this is very essential guys you need this uh what protective measures are taken by the staff to ensure that you and your passengers don't get infected uh we've taken a lot of uh measures in our airline um we social distance uh we have catered uh, our service the meal service it has been uh, altered actually we've altered it we do not get more time to interact with customers for social distancing and we sanitize all the time we've already implemented uh, protective measures such as um, we're giving customers a uh, free mask they also getting free sanitizers and they're also getting free, free gloves so those are the measures and yeah we should we social distance most of the time yeah Okay, the next question is why medicine wow why medicine <laughs> i think for me personally since high school i've always wanted to study medicine i've always i've always been interested in how the body works you know when we were still doing life science i was just always like interested it was you know it was interesting just learning physiology and how everything functions the hormones like everything even the formation of a whole human being and personality it's a broad thing to study i know it's difficult sometimes but I just wanted to learn how the body works and how to fix what is wrong with the body so also saving people's lives that i think it comes with it as well so i've always been interested in that i've always been interested in saving people's lives and knowing that i can actually help someone become better like you know and yeah and curing things it's, it's interesting medicine is really interesting it's really broad that's one thing i like about it it's not just like limited to one thing it's, it's huge so you have that freedom that's why i chose medicine because it's so huge so yeah oh my god she says um have you ever experienced an almost plane crash moment well so far <laughs> no i haven't experienced that we have turbulence here and there but i haven't experienced that and hopefully i never get to experience that so yeah i'm praying so hard i'm praying so hard <laughs> The next question is tell us about life in Russia, the cost of living and all. Okay, life life in Russia is interesting. It's interesting. Interesting, it can be good and bad, but I'll try my best to be honest. Um I think it's quite different from South Africa. Um first of all, I must say that the crime here is really 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 not bad. Back home, guys in South Africa, you guys know. So uh Russia as a whole I think is is interesting because I feel like I'm free, I'm safer here when I can walk with my phone no one will try to rob me or anything and then also um the cost of living here i don't think it's that bad honestly speaking um yeah it's not that bad compared from uh, compared to where like south africa you know and also uh data here is very 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 cheap like it is so cheap guys so as a student that's actually a great thing because i can be able to go on youtube and actually you know get all the kind of things i need like the internet i'm able to study better because of that so yeah even like food i don't think it's that expensive here we are we are able to survive you know i think it's not that bad honestly speaking because i like the money i spend on food here i spend it on food also back home but here i'd even get some change you know and taxis here are cheaper buses are cheaper so yeah it's not that bad for a student it's great it's great so yeah okay question seven being in in so many different time zones how do you figure out a sleeping and working pattern <sighs> okay so what happens is when you go through your training they also teach you to always ad adjust and adapt to the time zone of where you are let's say um i left qatar in the evening and i arrive wherever i'm going in the evening or in the morning and that's when i'm supposed to be yeah in the morning when i arrive wherever i'm going in the morning that's when i'm supposed to be actually sleeping because i didn't sleep the whole night remember i was working so what you're supposed to do is just try by all means not to sleep or if you can't help it just sleep at least an hour or two hours so that you'll be able to to sleep uh, in that place it's a normal sleeping time like everyone there because you have to again wake up and go for your flight so you need to be well rested and all that so you gotta adjust with the 
time zone of that country that you're going to, if I'm making sense. The next question is, how many languages do you speak? Okay, I speak uh, three languages, but I understand a few. Um, I think I understand almost all the South African languages, all nine of them, are they nine? <laughs> and then uh, speaking, I speak uh, English, I speak Swati, I speak Zulu, and then I understand almost all of the languages from home. And also Russian, I understand a little bit of it. I did a bit of Russian when I arrived here, so yeah. yeah. Uh, how many languages do I speak? Well, I... I think around five. I speak uh, Ndebele, I speak English, I speak uh, Sotho, I speak uh, Shona, and I speak. Did I count Zulu? And I speak a little bit of Arabic, not that much, but a little bit. It's not a requirement to work in the Middle East to know Arabic, but I, I understand it. And I can speak a little bit, but I'm not that fluent. May I make Did I count? Yeah, I think I counted all. Okay, the next question is Is it expensive to study medicine in Russia compared to South Africa? To be honest, I think it's the same. I really think it's the same, to be honest with you. Uh, because I also did like find it out because I wanted to get space to study in South Africa so I think the costs are the same roughly but the only thing would be that um here for you to get resources it's much cheaper than South Africa like I said data here is cheaper you know wi-fi is cheaper even like having to transport yourself around different uh maybe study uh venues or campuses is cheaper and also yeah I think I think it, to come to be honest with you I think it's roughly the same like it's really the same so yeah Oh my god. <laughs> um, question is how do you manage social relationships and social life? <sighs> Guys, being a flight attendant is very hard to to keep up to keep up with life in general, to keep, keep up with the normal world in general because being a flight attendant is just a whole different ball game. It's not your normal job or yeah, it's just not a normal job. So with relationships, you gotta be with someone who's um, who's able to manage with you not being around, and someone who trusts you, someone who's not jealous. Like something you don't know you know, for this to work out, and someone who who's flexible also in traveling, so that they they be able to meet you in different uh, countries. So that you'll be able to see each other you know have time for bonding and all that and well for social life i i can't say i have a social life i try here and there but i have just a few friends who understand my schedule who, when they know that i'm off they try and we link up you know i'm a coffee person i'm a coffee or tea person i love those two i don't drink I don't drink alcohol not that it's a bad thing but I, I i just don't um so socially i'm always out for coffee sometimes alone like now i'm at a starbucks i'm having my coffee alone and i like that you know it helps me to recuperate it helps me to sit down think strategize you know and yeah here in doha doha is famous for brunches so we go for brunch with my friends yeah so basically that's it otherwise i'm always on the phone with my family so so yeah oh i'm on netflix and all that so i don't get to socialize that much and again doha is in qatar is a very small place i i, I don't want to be all over i don't want to be everywhere and there's nothing there's a lot of things to see but there's nothing much to see if i'm making sense um the very few first few months you're here you get to see the whole the whole country in fact so after that kind of gets you know so yeah that's how i manage okay. next question is after studying are you planning to practice medicine in russia or back home and why honestly speaking i'm planning to come back to south africa why i think it's because generally i don't like being a foreigner you know it's nice to travel i love you know going on vacations and going to other countries but not to stay there personally and i'm trying 
to also help to improve my country you know i know we have a huge shortage of doctors that side so i'd like to lend a helping hand unlike in russia where there's actually not much of a shortage of doctors here and even if you are a doctor here you don't get paid a lot because they're not they're not in demand like there's so many specialists so many doctors like like there's a, there's many of them so uh back home i feel like we need them more so i would i wouldn't mind going there to lend a helping hand and also i just love being in my country to like stay there and yeah i think being exposed to not really being home the freedom is not as much like you need to carry your, carry your passport wherever you go you need to you know it's like oh gosh me that's like but I, like, I feel like a foreigner i really feel like a foreigner i'm not too free so yeah but the main reason is that i want to go and help my country get better especially when it comes to having that huge shortage of doctors so that's why i would love to go back to work in my country uh, last but not least, the question is, how can another young lady who wants to become a flight, te flight attendant can be a flight attendant? What are the requirements? Well, um, you just got to be confident. Your confidence levels. Um, you got to be, I think, 1.65 meters. If you go on my channel, I made a video about that. I don't remember how tall you should be. And also, um, you should be over 21 years of age. Well, in in the Middle East companies, you should be more than 21 years of age. Uh, at least have your metric or your all levels. And um, you should also be, you should be good with your makeup. If you, even if you're not good, just try here and there. And what else what else what else you should be a team player you should be able to conversate with people who you don't even know strike a conversation and all um you should also be a humble person you need to be humble because you working with different people from different walks of life and um there will be egos clashing and everything so even the customers you, you get to meet those people so you gotta be that person who's humble who picks their battles wisely who knows what to say and not what and not what to say at that certain moment and above all what helped me the most was i researched about the company that i wanted to join and um yeah i went for interviews i tried more than more than five times <laughs> until I got it and yeah I I prayed hard I'm a Christian I prayed so hard to get to to get this job you know because imagine on your open interviews there's more than 2,000 people and they get to choose five four three people out of those 2,000 people so I prayed hard I prayed my way in guys I really prayed so whatever you believe in whether it's God or whatever you believe in you gotta make sure that you call upon it on that day you call upon it and tell it, yes, in, I'm going for my interview. I need you, you know. So call upon it. And yeah, and you should be able to be a person who's, who can make, who can think on their feet and who can make decisions uh, under pressure. And also you should be able to withstand being far away from home for a long time. For me, it was easy because I've, I've been in boarding school for more than four years. So this was just a walk in the park. So yeah, and guys, if you want more um, information or if you need help when the open day starts, when the company starts recruiting for the aviation industry, if you need more help, just hit me up. I'm going to help you. I'm going to take you through the process and all that. Um, above all, I'm loving my job. I'm loving everything. And I'm loving this country that I'm staying in because it keeps me grounded. And um, I, I get to learn different cultures, you know. So yeah, that's it. And um, thank you guys for watching our video. We'll do more collabs um, as time goes on. If you guys have something that you want us to talk about, or uh, you'd like to see in our channels, please feel free and and please do let us. Know.